So here we have our panelists and we are going to start with Antonio de Luis Acevedo, as I already mentioned, Managing Director of Fundae. He is going to explain a bit about the program that Fundae is working on in aspects related to training for cybersecurity. I also want to say hello to Amparo Valcarce, who is on the screen. Good evening, Amparo. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Angeles. From Fundae, first of all, we want to say thank you to Incibe. It's a group which we are really, really close to. We always collaborate together. And we are going to talk about generating and the conversion of cyber talent in cybersecurity. Fundae is a public foundation dedicated to train all of the workers of the state. We are training more than four million and a half workers and around 1 million workers through funds. We have three big problems as a state, as we can see in the map, the training it's made by there's many differences between the regions and this is very important because it's going to affect the way that we catch all of this talent when it comes to training in cyber security as you mentioned in the beginning we talked about the tech technologies, but cybersecurity affects to all of these sectors and territories. As we can see, we also have a very big gap when it comes to the other industries. For example, there are some industries like um, fishing, maritime, where we are not even present. And it's important because it's going also to affect them, this cybersecurity issue. When it comes to enterprise training, in this year, we we have been training more than 40,000 workers in cybersecurity. We have prepared a specific course, and we are going to have more than 140,000 students in tech technologies from which we are going to train more than 72,000 in the cybersecurity side. It's very important, the effort that we are doing towards this way, because we are in a transformation process, a digital transformation in which we are already late. So it's very important, for example, from these 76,000 courses that we were doing in the state, in Spain, on by Monday, we see the differences by territories. Madrid is working at a really high speed and uh, they are decapitalizing the rest of the regions. And when it comes to what can we do, because we are late, what we're doing is working in uh, detecting these needs of training with the social agents, with these structures by sectors, and we are also collaborating with the autonomous communities because it's very important in this middle of this uh, technological revolution to know in what to train people. So we have this policy of detecting the needs of the training and we are focused on the specialties in which we have to train people in cybersecurity. We have an equality structure, so we have the syndicates of the digital economy and they have told us what is necessary to train people on its safety in the internet, of the servers, of informatic systems, of IBM, ethical hacking, and this is really important because ethical hacking allows the access to the other levels, hacker ethics in easy counsel and also a management of the safety in enterprise. It's very important to work together because we are in the middle of a revolution and everybody has to um, give their ideas and information. And that's why we're working with the autonomous communities. When it comes to other line that we already have, it's very interesting, is the digitalizate, digitalize yourself space. The Secretary of State of 
digitalization and digital economy, Karl Artigas, she mentioned in the inauguration, Digitalizate, it's this space where the big technological enterprises are working together with Incibe to give resources and courses for free to the population. There's 20, 23 big enterprises, among them Incibe, with more than 550 resources of training. So it's been a really big success. It's a great example of a public-private collaboration. As you see, the web page is open for everybody, it's for free, and the competences go from the basic digital to advanced competences. Also, with the collaboration of INCIBE, of course, with Rosa Díaz, who is the director who signed with us the agreement. As you can see, the enterprises that you can see in the screen is, for example, Amazon Web Service, Sabadell, Bankia, Adams, Cisco, Cloudera, Everest, Fujitsu, Accenture Foundation, Cruz Campo, Once, Telefónica, Google, Huawei, Incibe, IBM, Linux, Microsoft, Oracle, SAP, SAS, and Structuralia, and Orange. It's a very important because in the world we're living in, we must know what's happening in these enterprises. The gap between these enterprises and the rest of the population is really big. So we are, allow me to say this, we're a bit lost when it comes to this transformation because these structures of knowledge, which was the university and the administration, they are not operating. So, for the other line of collaboration, of this public-private collaboration, which is all of the administration side that has resources of training, and they are very important, and they also have the deep knowledge, we have a second working line. When it comes to the spread of this training in cybersecurity, we are working with INCIBE in distributing throughout every autonomous community the knowledge of the digital transformation. And with OITEZ Interfor, that means South America, we are establishing a line of collaboration also. There's going to be we want to imply the big enterprises, industrial and technological, in the training of their industry and their territory. Because, as I mentioned before, we were a bit late. And we are seeing how to shape this collaboration with all of the agents. So to finish with, we have to do a really big effort to reach every territory, especially the freelance workers and the SMAs. It's a quite Spanish uh, problem and doing a really um, inclusive training system. And later search for a space of collaboration of all of the agents for this uh, digital transformation and cybersecurity. We're going to listen to the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Defense, Alvaro Alcance. Thank you very much. Good evening. We are going. We are seeing these times of changes. The pandemic has just made made go really faster this process that we had already been seeing. Part of our work and lives is in the social networks and in networks. We are more exposed to cyber attacks this way. So before the COVID-19 training related to cybersecurity was relevant in the army, now with the virtual work or work from home, it's really important. So the European Union points out that 35% of the European workers don't have enough digital knowledge, which are really important for these uh, works and jobs they are carrying out. We also have to and remind that in Europe, we have identified 750,000 areas that are not covered and 350,000 especially in the area of cybersecurity. 
training is not only on the size of technology and experts, it has to be opened to other profiles. And this is what we are working in in the armed forces. In Spain, there's a generation which is really capable, but we must get this uh, talent from them. There's a very important network of people who can do these works. In the future, these uh, job positions are going to be multiplied by three. There's more than 10,000 employments without being covered in the side of engineering, mathematics and technology. In the Ministry of Defense, in the last two years, we have trained more than 1,600 militaries from our academies and our schools, but we have also recruited more than 300 engineers that started working for us. But we are still working to add more profiles among what we call the CETIM. And I say CETIM as a difference from CETEM because sometimes we lack some candidates. So we lack of extending the language, the Spanish language when talking about technology. The data, piece of data that I showed, it's a paradox. If we take into account that we in Spain, we are above the European average when it comes to the university people. But we also have to remind that the technical university people are still not enough and we are not meeting our goals. To this, there's also a lack when it comes to talent and we must correct and modify this because only the 13% of the 13 graduates in Europe are women and something really similar happens in the armed forces in Spain. Cybersecurity, it's a challenge, but we all have to start and arrange new strategies to reorganize training and teaching. And I think a good example of success of this strategy is our collaboration with INCIBE. I think, and I want to appoint that we, the training, we are going to focus on competences, abilities and skills, specifically the ethical side and the continuous development. The 11th of June, the president of the government promoted the National Defense 2020 norm, which is the framework of the defense policies. In this says that defense is a public service that contributes to keep the safety, but also the rights and liberties of the European and Spanish citizens. The armed forces should be available for people and also to face this challenge, this continuous transformation, mainly because we must face threats among the challenges, we could identify the relevance of the aggressions in the cyberspace. It could seem a matter, an issue that's quite far on time, but it's not like this. It's a mean of national security. And we must work on this. They don't exist exclusive problems to defense, but defense is part of the solution to any of these problems. This is not only about how can it affect to our infrastructures, to our economy, to the way of the service publics to work, but also the defense of our rights and freedoms. So, now it's really important that the armed forces are trained and prepared enough so that they are the center of any strategy to give any kind of answer to these challenges towards the rights and freedom of the Spanish citizens. And many of these challenges are in the cyberspace. We are not only facing an exclusive problem of the technology, but a problem of technology and adapting this training. I want to talk 
to you about the fundamental elements of this new itinerary of the training. Cybersecurity is for us a central element in all of the Ministry of Defense. We think the technological excellence must be moved also to the military training. But also, we want to have a presence in training, in research, in investigation, innovation, and generating talent. In the armed forces also, we really take good care of other elements, which is the training the conscience of people. People being conscious of this, it has two elements, the own conscience to protect your own data, but we also must inform people on the protection of the system that they are working in. And both are together in the cyberspace. So this is a very complex environment, an environment in which we have our professionals, but in units which are a true system of systems, like the new iron systems, our aircrafts, or the advanced systems of control. These systems that will be integrated with artificial intelligence. But only people are going to be part of this. I want to put as an example Baxi, the intelligent and sustainable aerial base. It's an example of what I said because as the name says, it connects the different physical elements with other elements which are not physical and they form this area. The installations and the equipment. None of this can be separated if they want to work with security. So the level of exposition caused by this connectivity is being contracted by our professionals. And for this is what we must improve the training towards the vulnerability that can be a huge challenge to operate in cyberspace. For this, the protection systems are so important, but the people are the critical elements of this strategy. With this objective, the training is focused on training professionals of the armed forces and digital citizens so that they can be able to recognize and face threats and risks each time bigger and more dangerous. This is done some by some curriculum which are integrated in the educational system a university and professional training but also with the specialties of the armed forces in which the digital competences and cyber security are a fundamental part of the responsibility in training so the cyberspace has been identified as a fundamental specialty as for the armed forces of the air. So this continuous training among the armed forces is asking for a permanent intake. Is some these people they have the experience and they are key for this specialization that we want. But I want to insist also that the sponsors that we have for this training. So we have already started in September our fourth edition of the management course of STIC for the military officials. This is going to allow them to get a master's degree of TIC for defense. This is an official title of the Vigo University, and this incorporates 11 credits just focused to cybersecurity. 
But we must also reinforce the training of the sub-officials, especially with the creation of specialities of systems of training, communication and cyber defense. And this is not only about the training, which is going to allow them to get this title, but also it's going to be completed by the perfection in training. This training, it's about the implementation and management of the ICT systems, defense of systems, equipment, networks from the armies and also the armed forces. Not, and they are very important, not for the everyday work of the systems of defense, but for everything that entails what we are working on. So when it comes to our soldiers, And here it's very important in INCIBE this ambitious plan of individual action for the professional development of the soldiers. That means soldiers and sailors in the armed forces. Their design is based on several pillars. The first one and the fundamental one is to obtain a technical title middle technical title of the professional training, but it also entails the professional experience that they have reached. It constitutes a very important tool in which we are also incorporating the pillars of the cybersecurity. What do we what do we want with this? We want to train our soldiers and sailors, but also when these men and women finish their commitment to the armed forces, they are in the best conditions to be able to start working in the ordinary um, market, labor market. So for this, we have very important partners in CIBE, one of them, fundamental, but also the state service of employment. So we're in a situation of improving more value to the uh, professional training in our country. So we consider that with this shared objective within CIBE, we are supporting this promotion and generation of talent, but also we expect to have enough support to improve the employment and the empowering of the industry when it comes to this industry. This is a training formation, the one we are developing within CIBE. It lasts for a year. It is very excellent. It has a semi presential format and it's structured so that in the first stage, it's a course with some tutors and they introduce people to cybersecurity. The contents are very centered in the needs of the labor market and we have more or less 200 military students in the second stage in which in CIBE 100 students participate it's presential it includes specialization courses and they are centered and focused on um, demanded profiles by the cybersecurity industry and also the different industries that want to keep their systems safe from uh, threats and risks. And the third stage, it's followed by a reduced number of students. And if they uh, overpass this, they get a credit from the University of Leon. From the courses that we have already done, we can say that we are really, really satisfied on the quality of the training so that our students, they've been able to participate in the last editions in the cybersecurity bootcamp organized by Infime. I want to finish by mentioning briefly to the university centers of the defense in the 
academies of Zaragoza, in convenience with the University of Zaragoza, the General Academy of the Air in San Javier, Murcia, and also the Polytechnical University in Cartagena, Murcia, once again. And the last one, University in Marin, in, with a convenience in San Marino University. So all of these centers, they train engineers for the armed forces, but also the future officials of the armies and the armed forces. They teach for the PhD and master's degree, but I think it's really relevant to highlight that all of them, they have a transversal and cross-sectional training when it comes to cybersecurity. I think in the following days, we will also have the opportunity of introducing and presenting in Leon. And I hope with the collaboration of the INCIBE and the people who are here with us, we are going to to perform the 24, 25 of November, another Congress of Defense and Security organized by the Ministry of Defense. In this encounter, we hope it can gather all of the researchers and trainers of the cybersecurity area and security area also applied to defense. To also the observatory of the army. My wish is that we all have the opportunity to be able to participate in it. And I also invite the people who are here with us, with me, in this meeting of NICE, in this uh, 14th edition. And it's also developed in my really beloved city of Leon. For me, it's a big satisfaction to also say hello to you, Angel Escaso, to all of you, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. I also now want to listen to this person. He is going to talk about a training in cybersecurity, but centered in very different people uh, than the ones that Amparo was talking about, people that we would never identify on a first state with cybersecurity because the foundation that he manages, the Foundation Good Job, works with and for um, handicapped people. So please, could you talk a little bit about what you do? Well, first of all, good evening. Thank you very much. Congratulations in CIVE for the organization of the event. Also, hello, Undersecretary. Hello, Antonio. First of all, I want to talk a bit about how what is good job. Uh, we are a foundation, a non-profit foundation. We work with handicapped people. We are focused basically in employment and um, disabilities. We don't have uh, day centers or structures like this, so we try to introduce improvements uh, to the lives of these handicapped people, especially in the area of employment. Uh, where the way we act are basically based on that on life of handicapped people with every kind of help that we can provide to them they can end up in the job positions of any kind of enterprise as also the undersecretary mentioned in this case of course uh, we want them to work in any kind of enterprise so we have some instructors we are an agency of placing people we do anything we can to reach these um, requirements and objectives. Was I wanted to highlight a program that we have in CIBE. It's called uh, Program Include, and basically it's summed up. It's a program dedicated or that wants the job integration of handicapped people in a stable way in the ordinary labor market and also in the sector of cybersecurity. And specifically here, because I think we have been hearing this they lots of reasons, important reasons of the capacity of this industry to absorb many job positions. These job positions, they have a very profitable future and also stable future. So what is this program about? Basically, we started this program 
uh, focused on handicapped people who were searching for a new job, more or less 100 people. They did not have a specific training. It's not for engineers, not for licensees. Um, so it's people that come from other sectors and they can recycle themselves with this. So we started with 100 people in Barcelona, eh, Castilla y León and Madrid. And we have done two editions. In May we did the first one and we are going to talk about some results. And in September uh, we are finishing the second one. So the first one, it consists in a training, capacitation of five weeks, very intensive, very practical. Uh, the contents are taught by professionals, um, they are concerned with the ecosystem of cybersecurity sectors so that they are very practical because in five weeks you cannot teach anybody to work in cybersecurity just by knowledge, but as a training, a strong training so they, that they can start with operation in cybersecurity level zero and level one, that means SOCs. Then there's nine months they are um, hired by the uh, enterprises we work with in the foundation, in the enterprises, so that among and together with all of us to clear any kind of doubt they can have, for example, in the side of the office skills and also in the side of uh, knowledge, technologies, cybersecurity. So anything that arises, they can clear it up. So at the end of these nine months, they can start working in the ordinary um, enterprises to go with fast because we don't have much time. In May, the edition, first edition of the Include program was uh, developed in May, where 55 people, uh, 42 finished this training, and many of them are working, 25 are working, for example, in Movistar, SICAP, um, Germany, and many other enterprises. Many of them are an online format. Uh, we were we wanted to do it in person, but um, due to COVID, we had to do it online. And when it comes to the contacts, contents, uh, Roma Ramirez, uh, one of the fundators of the com, um, he based these contents related with the enterprises in which these people later work. So when are we going to know if this has been successful or no? Uh, we're going to see when it comes a April 2021, when they start, uh, they are part of the enterprise itself. Later, we have done the edition in September. Essentially, in this September edition, we had 60 people. It's also an online format. In this case, we have 25 people from Madrid, 20 from Catalonia, and 12 people from León. I hope they can all have their place in other enterprises. Now we are finishing the fifth week of this training. And we hope that we can also get some new enterprises that can see uh, in a very good way this program. So what's this include process? The selection program is quite uh, severe. It lasts one month and a half for 100 people. Uh, Telefonica interviewed more than 1,000. From there, they got 467. Then they did some um, technology competences test, another 400. And then there was a last uh, personal interview. So which are the levers for this that we use for this program? So with all of the trainings and extensive trainings and how s difficult is cybersecurity because it's not even determined it's something that is growing and it's it's improving it's by day by day so how can a person outside from this industry without any knowledge can start working in in this industry there's very focused contents in intensive formation six hours during the weeks also we support ourselves in inspiration because after these six hours, a professional in cyber security from different origins, they tell their experience, their background related to cyber security. And here for us, it's very interesting uh, to have this um, 
labor trainer that helps these people to train themselves towards the labor market and he's kind of a tutor to ensure that this program works and also the control and validation are very interesting in the evaluation classes so they have volunteers from um, enterprises like for example Gemcap, Gemini, Movistar, Signe, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Cisco, Microsoft, all of them they are volunteers for these enterprises and they do some tutor classes and they reinforce these um, students to make sure they are acquiring the knowledge that they need and also they reinforce if they need anything else. And we have also some tools which are kind of creative, like for example, some other jobs and works and WhatsApp groups with laboratories also and virtual machines, which are available for them. So during the evenings when they are not in the um, trainings, they can technically um, investigate a bit more and acquire more knowledge. Because this is a training and it's not a training uh, like by itself. Before, the subsecretary said that we must be creative and transform the trainings, and I agree with this. So with these programs, we want to do a quite fast uh, training, and then there in the enterprises, the participants can still learn more things and acquire more knowledge and certification to define them, defend themselves in the labor market. How does this go to the enterprises? How is the process? At the end, we do a technical uh, information document because they don't have a curriculum to, to go there to see the information. So we value the capacities that we think they have or they must have in the job position they aspire to get and we send these documents so that the collaborators enterprises uh, check. They do personal enterprises based on these um, informative documents and what can happen if does this person is hired or not. If he's hired, we do a value together with the enterprise to know which knowledge do they are, they are going to know, which knowledge do they have. The itinerary they have to follow if they enter, it's more focused and centered by the enterprise Enterprise, but also agreed by the the CIBE, sorry by our um, agreement. And if they are not hired, they are going to be hired in the future because we are going to still be working with them in the future. What is the profile in our program? There's a very important percentage of women in the May edition and September editions is a 37% of women and this is very important. Uh, and now I'm not talking about gender, but also by age. It, this caused my attention, 18% of people are over 45 years old, between 45 and 65, and then the 67% between 26 and 45. This is quite aligned with the market. I would also say from a perspective of training, we have also found that the people that we have attracted uh, through the public services of employment in the three autonomous communities we're working on, people has come with a level of um, training, not in uh, technological degrees, and this is very important, a 39% of formations they have already started in the university, which is quite high when it comes to uh, people with disabilities, for example, and also professional formations, uh, 45%. And then when it comes to the disabilities, how this is distributed, it's not only for one type of disability. It not de doesn't depend on this, but on the capacities of each of the persons that want to participate and also based on the requirements of the enterprises they want to work in. We started thinking that they were going to come in stock, but 60% now they are being uh, higher in intelligence and also in consultancy. And this is surprising, but it's also very nice to know. So basically, when it comes to the profile of disability, a big uh, percentage is a physical disability. We also have a psychical uh, disagreement, intellectual, mental, 12% um, of uh, sense handicaps. 
disabilities and when it comes to multi disabilities so it's a 17 percent this is kind of a cross sectional um disability and we have a high percentage on this 60 percent of the disabilities we find of the people are disabilities that they inherited for example a person that has a job in um for example, for an accident or whatever, they can suddenly be handicapped. The horizon includes, and I am about to finish, it is what we say, where do we want to go in the future? What we want is to do three editions each year, one edition in January, February, another one in April, the other one in September, more or less 150 per year, is more than 450 per year at the end that they could be hired in this program and in the enterprises later. Next year, we want to go to the Basque country also, to Galicia, uh, Valencia, and other autonomous communities that we know that there's very good professionals. We want to evolve in the, problem, in the program. We are learning so much from the first editions. The more volunteers, the more enterprises, the more contacts we have with the social services programs uh, this is even more enriching this is a way of talk to each other this is a way of being in the system we didn't know a lot about cyber of cyber security now we know it more but we know that we can improve even more in because in this moment we are living it's time to learn for me the most uh, valuable and also the courageous that wanted to start with us of course in Thibe that has empowered this and also the SIG um, magazine because together with Rutercon they gave us a mention because we did certificates of uh, training and cyber security and together with them we started of the genesis of this program and also Telefonica and Atos, they were uh, committed at the beginning to say, OK, I'm going to hire 10, 10, 10 people in our enterprise. And then the technological enterprises are collaborating with us, which they are providing their laboratories, their professionals, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Microsoft, Cisco, um, I, I, I cannot stop saying thank you to them, and also to each volunteer, all their enterprises who are hiring our people, 21 Sec, SIG, Signe, Botec, Capgemini. This is not only about hiring 10 people, you hire 15, whatever. No, a person, it's valuable. So it's not, you don't have to donate um, any quantity to the foundation just to go with us, accompany us, and trust us. And also, very important to mention to the public service of the community of Madrid and also the Generalitat for uh, their backup their help that we can we could have done with their with their help so thank you so much and also um, the message for me it's the industry of cyber security it's a sector an industry to be defined and we must take in account the people with disabilities not only to make them accessible for them but also that they also have the opportunity of employment among this industry because this is going to enrich the industry because when somebody with a hand with a handicap with a disability sees from the point of view of their life they are enriching um, our situation and our experience. So I think it's very interesting to incorporate this collective to the system. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you.